this is Fountain Pendulum. Thank you for watching. The subject before us today is chromatography. This is really exciting to do and I hadn't actually tried chromatography prior to um, I guess leading up to this video but it had been something I've been wanting to try out. So this is an introduction to it. There's going to be a later video that's a little bit more advanced but if you want to try out chromatography now, then this is a good basic introduction for you. So let's start out by my findings and then we're going to talk about how to actually do this. So the ink that I used for the large uh, portion of my samples here is Ferris Wheel Press Grace, uh, Grape Ice Pop. So it's a kind of mauvey purple with a green sheen, nice shading. So the first and most simple and logical thing to use for chromatography is this is a number four coffee filter. Number four is preferred for a couple reasons. One, it's thicker. Two, it's flat. So there's very little waste in this product. The ones that have a lot of creases, they're well, the creases are kind of um, not ideal to be using, but also it's a thinner material. So that's the background on this. Now, if you don't drink coffee, it's up to you to decide, is this something worth purchasing or should you just buy chromatography strips? You can buy these coffee filters pretty much anywhere, including in stores and online. Chromatography strips, you're gonna be able to find more easily on Amazon. They're not very expensive. So if you're not a coffee drinker, you might just skip and go straight to the chromatography strips. In a future video, I'll be comparing the results on chromatography strips to coffee filters. But today, we're working coffee filters. And um, if you don't have those, do you have paper towels? Because I'm going to give it a go on this too. So using the coffee filters. First of all, before I get to that, this was a normal ink swatch for the color. Now on watercolor paper, I did a couple of swatches. This one. And I'm trying to pick up if there's anything on these different techniques that I used that would bring out the properties that you would see on chromatography. This one was the most. I wet it and then I put a couple drops of ink on it and these are this is on the coffee filter so that's the chromatography on a coffee filter so not really but if we look under a little magnification there's just the faintest suggestion of blue being there especially right there so I guess the study here is that any swatching that you can do on normal or even watercolor paper aren't going to show the properties, but these don't show the same properties that you would get on, um, you know, a swatch. Like you're not going to be able to pick up the sheen and the actual color of, of the ink itself. What the chromatography does is it separates the ink particles and pigments so that you can see what the composition of this ink color is and its properties. So for example, here's one that I did that has sheen on it. And again, under magnification, so you can see a little bit better, there is the shimmer or the glitter. And as we work our way up, we're seeing browns, reds, yellows, greens, and blues. The color that this is, is this color swatch. Jacques Harbon Carrie de Cypre. So that's pretty amazing, I think. I think that's very cool. Here's another one. This is um, Jacques Harbon Emerald de Chivore. Interestingly, this one didn't pick up any 
Actually, it did pick up some shimmer. It's so faint, you can barely see it. Right there. Silver. So, this is what we're going to be working on today. Um, I want to show you the best technique that I have. I've tried a lot of different things, and I just want to share with you guys what worked, what worked the best. And another study I did was like some of the videos I've seen um, and instructions are the ink has to be wet, the ink has to be dry. So I'm going to show you the difference. You decide if it's worth it. Is there a difference? Yes. Is it worth it to you to wait for the ink to dry before you do your chromatography? That's up to you. I'll show you the results. So just up front, let's run through these. The grace I <coughs> grape ice pop. Three different methods. First, in a small glass for espresso or other beverages. Next, this is a tall glass, um, I don't know, like pipette or cylinder. And just a, this is actually what I use for holding ink vials. It's a wood desk holder. And conveniently, this fit perfectly. And where I got this was actually, um, this is from a vanilla bean pod. So when you buy dried vanilla bean pods in the store, like three of them will come in this glass um, container. And when I finished the vanilla bean pods, I thought, this is going to be good for something. I have no idea what, but I'm going to hang on to it. And today, it fulfilled its purpose. So that's the second method we'll try. And then the third one is actually just doing it on a plate because I think a lot of people get daunted by having to find a container and you have to keep it in suspension. So I'm going to show you the difference. So I would say between these two methods, there's hardly any difference. It's just what's convenient for you, what you have around the house to use. And if you don't have anything like that or you just don't want to deal with the finickiness of suspending something in the air, then a plate will work. But I'll show you the different results. First of all, we're going to talk about um, the coffee filters. So I started out with big sheets like this. So this is about a quarter of the entire, because um, this is folded, so a quarter of the entire coffee filter. And I found this too large. Um, it absorbed a lot of water. It took longer to dry. It spread out the pigments more. So I would say, for, in my opinion, too big. Then I moved on to a slightly smaller size. And I tried a couple different things. I tried cutting the bottom and I tried ripping the bottom to see if any different effects happened. I don't know. I just thought maybe it would come out like <laughs> squiggly or something. It didn't. So um, not going to be doing that. Um, this size was much better, but I still found it to be bigger than necessary. So I continued on to find my perfect size. I did a smaller one and uh, this one's still too big. The smaller one was too small. Um, it ran out of room for the water to keep continuing and absorbing and separating the pigments out. And so that kind of defeats the purpose. So these are the perfect sizes I landed on. I'm going to show you how to um, go ahead and cut them also. But I just wanted to show you that I did do my, you know, I did the trial and error for you guys. I'm going to say these sizes are not ideal, so just scrap that. And these are the ideal sizes. So, these I did on the cup and cylinder or pipette um, sizing. I don't think that is a pipette, so I'm going to stop saying that. I'm just going to call it a cylinder. So this is with the ink still wet. So I applied the ink, it didn't have time to dry, and I submerged it into the glass. That's how the result came out. This is when it was dry. There is a difference. I would say the pigment is more concentrated, kind of in an upward motion on the dry one. And the end colors are a little bit more again, um, constrained and concentrated than the wet. Timing wise, there was a difference too. So we're going to check that out. 
Then I tried tearing the bottom of the strip. I don't know, I thought it might absorb a little bit differently, and it did. So these are little things that you can alternate between. So compare that to when I did it on a plate instead of these have to be suspended. So you need something holding it here. I used a paper clip. But when you have it flat on a piece of, well, on any surface, the effect is not as ideal. So these two in particular, this one was better and I, and I held it up a little bit. So, but that's an option. So if you're not so, you know, um, specific about the kind of results you are getting, you just want to see what it is and you don't care that it comes out a little murky or a little um, muddy, then go for it because the plate is easy. So um, I'm going to do a different color for our um, testings, color testings right now, the ones we're going to do together. So this is the Krishna Shani and this looks like a green with almost a red sheening. It's very dark. It's kind of gray toned, um, earthy toned also. And the results of this are going to be very interesting. I did a preliminary test just to make sure it was going to be interesting <laughs> before I selected it. So I'm going to clear off the desk and we'll dive into that. By the way, I forgot to show you the paper towels. This is how the paper towels turned out for those of you that don't have coffee filters. This is with the ink being wet. This is with the ink being dry. So it still definitely shows the properties off well. It's just a little bit less of a crisp result. And I'd say working with paper towels is less desirable. They get a lot wetter and they take a lot longer to dry. But if that's what you have and you don't want to keep them, I'd say these are better. Like you can trim them and maybe um, glue them to the back of your swatches if you wanted to. This is a material that I don't see that working out so well. So I still wanted to show you them because I think it's, if you're going to just dispose them, but you want to see the properties, it worked fine, but not as well as the coffee filters. All right, so let's start from the beginning. This is a number four coffee filter. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut off this unwanted textured folded bit on the two sides. And then this extra lip, we'll cut that off also. Then you can either fold this once and twice and then cut it from there but I actually prefer even though it's a little bit more work just to go ahead and cut it in half first and then you know fold it once, fold it twice. Then what I do is I make sure that I am cutting this square and then cutting the edges off this either side so that each four pieces is set individually free like that. Of course, you could also just do it individually. The reason I like doing it the other way is it ensures that all the papers end up the same size and then I can see very plainly the results. If you leave one tip a little diagonal, it might affect how quickly the water absorbs in certain areas. So that's just something to consider. Again, it just depends on how precise you want your results to be. Okay, 
So out of the one coffee filter then, we're going to have eight chromatography strips. And I like that they're tapered. You can cut them in a different fashion straight. I just think that this works very well. So you can, next, the ink. So I already mentioned we're going to be using the Krishna Shani. And if you have a pen inked up in this, then use it. I don't, so I'm going to be using a dip nib. And it'll be easier for you if you pick a dip nib that has a good reservoir for ink. That way you don't have to be dipping and re-dipping and re-dipping. So let's do these same um, kind of ink tests again. We'll tear the end off two of them. So we'll do wet, wet, dry, dry. Actually, let's do this dry too. Okay, so we're going to do dry on wet on the plate method. We're going to do dry and wet in the cylinder method, and we're going to do dry and wet on the glass cup method. Then let's do, um, these are torn, but we'll do dry and wet on these two. So dry, wet, we'll do torn. Okay. Using a pencil or a ballpoint pen are ideal. I'd say a pencil more so just in case the water were to go up this high, it won't start bleeding into the ink of the ballpoint pen or fountain pen. The fountain pen would just bleed all over the place, so don't even go there. And the pencil would not react or uh, disappear. So that's why we're doing that. Okay, so next, let's get all the dry ones and go ahead and ink them up. We want to give these time to dry, so we're going to do all the wet ones back to back, and then we're going to give the dry ones, we're going to ink them up now and give them time to dry. Now, I don't expect you to measure this, but what I found ideal is to put your line about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And then you're gonna let it submerge into water a quarter or a half an inch so that there's always gonna be a gap and the ink not touching the water. You'll ruin the test if you do that. So we're gonna go ahead and put this down we want a nice, generous amount of ink there, placing it horizontally. I don't measure it every time. I'm just saying this is the distance I found that works well for the results that I'm looking for. Okay, so we're going to let those dry. We'll come back to them later. And we're going to start with the wet tests. So these you're going to want to do right away. Let's start with the glass. So get a glass and something to suspend it with. So the idea here is we're going to put the paper in the glass. It's fine if it touches the bottom of the glass, but what we don't want is the paper hitting the walls because once the paper hits the walls, the water will travel differently. It'll kind of like stick to the wall and the effect is very undesirable. It doesn't work properly. So what you want is you want this paper suspended right in the middle and it can touch the bottom. But again, were the ink 
line is, you do not want to touch the water. So you can stand here or you can hold this paper for, I my testing was about two and a half minutes for desirable results. So you can hold this for two and a half minutes if you'd like to, but if you would not like to, then you need to find something to spend this paper above the water while it's in the water. This oversized paper clip worked per perfectly for me. I just slip it in here and rest it. Then I can just let go and let it roll for two and a half minutes until it's done. You can use a lot of different things that you might have. I think a large regular paper clip might work depending on the size of your cup. These guys would work well in some situations too. Like you could suspend it. This one actually doesn't hold open, but I guess my point is just get creative with what you have to make it work for you. Um, so yeah, I'll be using the paper clip. I would suggest this. If you're doing a whole bunch of these, then let me see. Let's, there we go. Set it up ahead of time like this. I can see that the paper is just about touching the bottom and then be aware of how much water you're putting in. So I dipped this already. Now I actually haven't put water in yet. I'm gonna use my syringe to do that to make sure I don't put too much water in. While we're on the subject of water, I used distilled water. So now it's going to be slowly spreading up. I'm going to do a time lapse. All right, things are going well on this. I think it's probably about to completion. Generally three and a half minutes later, but most certainly what you're actually looking for is for water to surpass the ink just ever so slightly, like an eighth of an inch. But sometimes that never happens, uh, at least in my experience. So I'd say either or, you know, watch your, watch your timing, three and, a, three and a half minutes and it's probably at completion, or when the water surpasses the ink. I think dependent on the properties of the ink, the results might differ. But I'm going to go ahead and take this out. So let's take a look. You can faintly see the line that I originally put down. If it's very distinct, that means that there's some steadfastness or water resilience to this ink. I would say not so much on this one. But look at those look at those shades. I am surprised to see this from this color. That's pretty cool. So now it's time to let this dry. And I have found that you either want to let them kind of line dry, if you can accommodate something like that. I tried to leave some drying on this paper holder because they're not perfectly straight. They just crinkled up. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing that. What works perfectly for me is I have this A4 clear plastic writing um, pencil board. So I just lay them flat to dry on this and they actually don't take very long at all to dry. Maybe 10, 15 minutes. So dependent obviously on conditions. So I'm just gonna lay them all out to dry there. And I'm ready to move on to the next one. So the next one is going to be using this 
cylinder. I'm gonna set this up a little different. Okay, I think this is the best I can do. So we're gonna get another wet sheet, same ink. I'm gonna put a line down. Then I'm gonna put this directly, maybe just bend it a little bit and put it directly in here. And let it work its way up. So that is how this one turned out. I'll let that dry. I'll show you all the comparisons at the end. So while that one's going, we're going to do the paper on the plate. So what you want to do here is kind of hold it up, get a syringe with water, and slowly introduce it. If you go too quickly, it won't work properly. You don't want the ink to touch the water, so make sure you're lifting it up. Okay, so these were our dry ones. Um, they feel dry to the touch. There's no moisture anymore, so they're ready to go. It's been a couple minutes while we were doing the wet ones. So I'll put this in, lower it to the water between a quarter and a half inch making sure the ink doesn't touch. Okay. All right, here are the final results for the Krishna Shani. So first of all, we've got in the glass cup, wet and dry. The dry is more concentrated, it doesn't travel up as much, and the transitions are sharper than wet. So when you're using coffee filters, is it, better or necessary that your ink dry before you dip it into the water? I would say no, it's not necessary. Does it give a different result? Yes. Do you like the result better when it's dry? Then go ahead and do it. If not, then wet. No big deal. Next are in the cylinder tube dry and wet. I'm not sure why, but interestingly, yellow turned up on both of these, but not on the cup. I may have left it a little bit longer. I'm not, I don't think I did though. So I don't know. That's, that's interesting. Next we have torn, dry and wet. Mm. The other thing to note, no significant difference, but the other thing to note about the dry is the line is visible at the bottom. The wet one isn't. So this is on the plate, dry and wet. I'm going to, ah, yeah, again, it just is a really a matter of preference. In the dry one, the yellow turned up, so I would say that that is preferable, but the colors were more concentrated here, so it's interesting. Paper towels, plate, wet, dry. I don't know about you, but I like the dry paper towel method dipped in the cup. So these two are cup, that's plate. These were the plate also. So I'd say that the most profound difference was with the paper towels. And I think dry gave a better result. Again, it's more concentrated, sharper transitions, uh, more 
distinguishable what's going on there. All the coffee filter papers have dried, including the plate ones, the whip which were the most wet, but the paper towels are still quite damp. So these are gonna take a long time to dry. I think they dry faster if you hung them, but again, I'm not really sure that drying them is that big of a deal because I'm not sure why you would want, if you would want to keep these. It's not really a fabric that's, that's utilized for that. So I would say that my favorite is dry in the cylindrical tube. So if this is the method I wanted to employ, I could certainly trim this down to size and just use a stick glue to put this on the back to have the chromatography available so that I know what the undertones, the breakdowns of this particular ink are. So that's all I have for the intro to using coffee filters and paper towels for chromatography. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I hope that if you haven't done chromatography on your inks already and you're interested, that this will give you the nudge to try it out and the insight. And if you have used the chromatography strips and coffee filters, if you've compared them already, let us know how that went for you in the comments below. And on a future video, I look forward to showing you the differences myself. It's all up to you now. Thank you for watching.